Hey, what is up guys? Matt and Jack here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be doing a $250 gaming PC that anybody can build. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by World of Tanks, an awesome free-to-play game. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of today's video to learn how you can get 500 gold free, a free tank, and free 7 days of premium access to World of Tanks. Thanks again to World of Tanks for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's talk about this PC, shall we? Alright guys, so this PC is another collaboration with our good friends over at UCW, a person who really nicely takes PCs like this and gives them new life by selling them at a really good price, and also he does contribute to a great cause. If you do buy this PC today using the link in the description down below, which will save you some money, you will be helping give back to a person in need. When he sells 10 computers, he does give back to a child in need who needs a computer, so really good cause, and we're going to talk about how this thing is a really good value for gaming. So you're probably wondering, why do we have two graphics cards up here? So we actually have a 1650 from MSI over here, and then we have a 550 from MSI, which didn't even realize they were both from MSI. Um, the reason we got both was because we were originally going to use the 550 for this, because we have to go low profile. This is a slim tower, got to be low profile. The 550, though, we kind of failed to realize that, you know, it's a little bit older and the performance is meh, you know, as Matt would say. Um, the 1650, on the other hand, we just realized is low profile design now. And that's actually a really good card for it being low profile. And we'll kind of talk about the specs in a minute. There's only a $30 difference between the RX 550 and the 1650. And as you will see in the benchmarks of the 1650, this thing is going to vastly outperform the RX 550 in terms of price performance. So in this case, it's definitely worth spending the extra $30. But if you were going to pick up a computer like this, which is still very capable of things like office tasks and even just normal gaming, like maybe some uh, esports titles, you could save some money with the RX 550. Now, how about we go ahead and talk about what's in this PC and then show you how to upgrade it because it's very simple, so don't get scared. So what we have here is an HP Elite Desk. Yeah, it's it's freaking Master Chief Elite Collection right here, but we have an i5-4590. We have a 500 gig hard drive in it, 8 gigs of RAM, and Windows 10 is actually on it. And now this is a hard drive though, 500 gig hard drive. We do recommend upgrading to an SSD if you want this thing to be like lightning fast because old computers and Windows 10, they uh, they just, they don't get along. SSD though will make it get along really well. One thing to keep in mind though is that there is only one SATA power in this. The other SATA power for the DVD drive is actually proprietary. So you actually are going to have to just swap out the drive for an SSD or get a SATA power splitter where it goes from one to two SATA powers and then you won't have a working DVD drive because you have to steal that SATA cable for it. So that's the one drawback. And so now real quick, we're going to kind of just show you how to install a graphics card in this. We're going to go with the 550 first. Now keep in mind these benchmarks that you're going to see first are going to be a lot crappier whether we put them side by side or not. The 550 we know is not going to do as good, so just stay tuned for that 1650. So both of these cards actually come with two different brackets. This is a full-size PCI slot bracket. This is what a uh, mini ITX one looks like or a low profile one. It's half the size basically. So I gotta do is take those little two uh, nibbits right there. Nibbits is a great way to say it. I like that. Just take that off and then put the yeah, new bracket on. Took a dead fly in here or something. Ooh, a dead like fly. It. The perks of buying used, a dead fly. Too lazy here. And with most pre built you don't even have to actually unscrew anything. You just, it actually looks like there's already been a graphics card in here before. And so you would normally pop the PCI lane uh, bracket cover off, but we don't even need to because it's already been popped off. So we just push down, boom, we lock this up, and look at that, it's already ready to go. Let's go ahead and take it over and benchmark it. All right, guys, so now that we got the system up and running, we're going to be testing the first game, which is Fortnite, because, of course, you all want to know how Fortnite runs on the system. Again, this is with the RX 550. You can see the GPU usage and temperature here. Um, and we are going to test this on Pro Settings, which is a view distance of Epic and everything else basically off and on low. So we're going to get a good idea of what this thing can do at 1080p. So we're going to go ahead and uh, dive into a Team Rumble match and uh, run around and see if we can get some kills. All right, guys, so now that we are in Fortnite, we are getting a very respectable around 80 to 70-ish FPS. We'll get a better idea of when we actually drop in uh, to the map. Um, there is some stuttering here and there, which you can tell by the GPU pinging at 100% randomly. That is definitely being the main bottleneck. The 550 is kind of a weird card because it comes in at around $130 for a low-profile version, which is pretty expensive for the amount of performance you're getting, considering we pay like $100 for 580s on normal-sized cards. Uh, but you're always paying a premium for the low-profile 
profile design. So keep that in mind. Um, and that's the limiting factor of pre-built like this. They're the slim towers that can't really be upgraded. So, but as we land, we're getting around 80-ish FPS, which again, this is the cheaper option. If you want to go with this, this is kind of the performance you can expect on pro settings with Fortnite. Um, it's not the most stable. Uh, frame rate, but you're not getting massive stuttering like you would in some situations where you're having like a really bad CPU and GPU pairing. So let's just run around and see if we can kill somebody. Uh. I'm a bot. I'm a bot. Hey, I did it. Whipped out my pro building skills. Uh, he has his parachute, but here he comes. Oh, what the? Who's shooting at me now? Oh, okay. I got shot from another guy. Interesting. I have to end him. Oh, hello. Who are you? Who are you? Oh my God. They're everywhere. But yeah, guys, in terms of performance, I'm getting around 80 to 100 FPS at times, and I have not experienced any major stutters. So um, overall, Fortnite has definitely been playable. I really can't complain. I really want to kill this guy, though, because he did me dirty. But um, let's see how this goes. Oh, what the hell? How did I kill? Okay, that was a bot, but um, there you go. Distant shot, pro gamer. But yeah, no, overall 80 FPS average, I would say, uh, playing Fortnite on pro settings as I fall to my death. Um, and I really can't complain. All right, guys, so the next game we're going to be testing is Rainbow Six Siege. We're going to be testing this game and Shadow of a Tomb Raider, which is going to be two games that have built-in benchmarks, so we can kind of compare the performance difference between the 550 and the 1650. Uh, right now on the menu, we're running on low settings 1080p, and we're at around 30-ish FPS, which for this game is not that good because this game isn't super hard to run. So this might be a case where you can finally see where the RX 550 might not be worth it if you plan on playing anything other than Fortnite. But actually, just prove me totally wrong, uh, we're getting about 80-ish FPS in the benchmark, which is weird because the menu seems to be more demanding, so might as well benchmark the menu than the actual game. Uh, but the RX 550 is definitely maxed out at 100%. Uh, we're getting around 60 to 70-ish FPS on all low settings, 1080p, which is definitely playable. So if you do want to go for a setup like this, it's definitely playable. Um, but we're going to let this benchmark run finally fizzle out, and then we'll uh, have some numbers to compare with the 1650 once we actually throw it in there. But um, 1080p, low settings definitely playable. All right, guys, and the final numbers we have right here are a minimum of 73, an average of 89, and a max of 112 on 1080p low settings. I can imagine that on high settings, we're probably going to get similar numbers with the 1650, but you will see that after we test one more game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All right, guys, the last game we are going to be testing with the uh, RX 550 is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I do expect this system to really struggle with. So we are running it on low settings 1080p, so do keep that in mind. And we'll be running on low settings with the 1650, so you can see the direct upgrade from going from the RX 5. 50 to the 1650. So we're going to go ahead and run this benchmark is a little bit long. So you're just going to see a little bit of a montage of it. And then we'll come back with the final results and discuss what kind of things we can expect from the 1650 and then actually show you. So let's run the benchmark. <laughs> All right, guys, so as you can tell, this poor system had an average FPS of 28, which is definitely less than ideal for a gaming PC. So just keep this number in mind. We're going to be testing the exact same settings with the 1650. And really, you just got to follow the same thing that we did with the 550. It's the exact same installation method. Swap the bracket if you need to swap the bracket, install it. Um, and yeah, we're going to install drivers, boot up uh, Fortnite again, and show you the performance difference. So in just a second, there will be a 1650 inside this PC. All right, guys, so now we are in Fortnite with 
1650 and just on the menu right now we're getting well over 300 fps as opposed to 100 so if that's something to tell you this performance is probably gonna be a lot better but we are running the same pro settings at 1080p let's queue into a team rumble and see what kind of results we can get all right guys so now that we're in fortnite we're getting around 100 ish fps as opposed to what was around 80 to 90 uh with the rx 550 so we're getting a noticeable improvement we are going to drop in still and see what kind of performance we can get this is actually a weird turn of events because right now the the i5-4690 is the bottleneck. It's at 100% usage right now, and the 1650 is not the bottleneck anymore. So we are getting the most out of this PC right now. Um, you could, in theory, upgrade this i5 to like an i7 in the future, and you can get even more performance from this little system. Um, but at over 100 FPS on pro settings, you're getting a very respectable value, considering that this system, for everything that it's worth, is going to be only a little over 250 bucks with shipping. So that's actually a great value for something that's getting close to 200 fps in fortnite on pro settings i mean i really can't complain so let's see if we can find somebody and uh do what we did last time and uh kill some people oh god here we go we are fighting a pro gamer apparently here we go i'm not sure hey buddy what's up oh oh god i did my gun out no Hey, I managed to kill him. Look at that. The FPS actually helped me, you know, that's, I, I, I can feel the frame difference. Feel the I feel those hurts at like well over 100 plus FPS, even though I don't even think I have it set to high refresh rate, but all right, we're dropping in on him. Come on. This should be an easy kill. Oh, not unless I get killed from the guy next to me. Where's that shot coming from? Oh, I am getting RPG'd. Ah, oh, this isn't fun. No. Oh, I think I got him. Oh, dude, he didn't want it. He didn't want the gameplay. This guy's still in the water. No, that was just fish. But yeah, look at that. I could kill people in Fortnite at well over 144 FPS. So high refresh rate Fortnite for 200 bucks. I mean, it's a no-brainer. So uh, let's go ahead and test those other games and see how this would perform in, let's say, a, uh, well, more demanding AAA title. All right, guys, the next game we're going to be testing is Rainbow Six Siege, which right now the menu is already giving us a better story, right around 60 FPS. But we are going to be running on the same low settings just so you can get a direct comparison. This is more than capable of running on low settings. Keep that in mind. You could run this on high settings and probably get similar results to the 550 on low settings. So we're going to go ahead and run in the built-in benchmark on low settings and then compare the numbers and see what kind of results we got. And as you can tell, diving in right now, we're at almost 200 FPS, which from what was around an average of 80 last time is very impressive. We're settling in around 160-ish, which again is well over the 144 hertz mark. So on low settings, you could play on a 140 hertz monitor and get very respectable results. And again, a $250 computer. So pretty good value, uh, if I do say so myself, for something that's good for high refresh rate. Um, but low settings, 100% usage on the CPU, which is something we noticed in Fortnite. So right now the bottleneck is the CPU. So in theory, you could upgrade to a 4th Gen i7 if you really wanted to and get a little bit more uh, legroom out of this system. But for such a cheap PC that you can build right now in the US to get it shipped to your door, it's honestly an incredible value. So as this wraps up, we'll get some actual numbers uh, to show and compare to the other one. But we're getting an average of 188, a minimum of 110, and a max of 284, which I will leave the other results on screen right now. Um, off the top of my head, I know this is a massive jump over the previous test. Um, again, we expected this, but the fact that the 550 low profile is $130, and just for $20 more, you're getting way more performance, it's kind of a no-brainer to go with the 1650, only if you really need to save that extra 20 or 30 bucks. So let's go ahead and test the last game real quick. All right, guys, and the last game we are going to be testing is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We are running on the same low settings, again, for comparison purposes, but I do expect a massive difference in terms of overall performance. So let's go ahead and run the benchmark. We'll let everything run through, and then we'll discuss the results at the end.
All right, guys, as you can tell, we have an average FPS of 69. 69 FPS is way higher than the 29 FPS that we got before on low settings. Is it ideal? No, considering running at low settings, but it does seem to be that the CPU is the main bottleneck here. So if you do look to expand into AAA titles some more, you probably want to look to upgrade to an i7 in the future with this system, which is very easy to do if you want to go for like an i7 fourth gen processor. Um, very easy to do, and it will cost you a little bit more money, but do keep in mind that the performance you're getting right now for 250 bucks really good value for money so how about we go ahead and wrap this video up real quick and uh, bring Jackson in here and see what we have to say about uh, buying this stuff today so as you guys could tell from the benchmark comparisons that we actually did in this video the 1650 really uh, takes the cake as far as performance goes you know for only $30 more the 1650 hands down we both say is a no-brainer but if you happen to have like a 550 for some strange reason or like a 1050 low profile that'll work just fine as well to make this a somewhat capable gaming computer now as always with ucw the deals are limited so if you do want to purchase this use the link down below we will update that with a timeline because right now i don't have a specific timeline for when this deal actually ends but as always it only runs about a little over a month so supply is limited link in the description down below you could buy the computer here and also if it does go out of stock i'll show you some other places where you can buy this computer for probably a little bit more because ucw is giving you a good discount by being a Toasty Bros viewer, um, but we'll try to keep this as up to date as we can so you can use this guide in the future when you are building a custom PC. But as we mentioned, very impressed with the system and thanks again to UCW for supplying this and helping our viewers get a really awesome computer for a really awesome price. So you're looking for a game that has a ton of excitement and is totally different from any other team deathmatch game that's out there? Well, today's video sponsor, World of Tanks, might be a good option for you. So as Matt mentioned, it's a team deathmatch, but you're actually controlling a tank, and there's a wide variety of tanks that you get control in all kinds of different game modes as well. The high action gameplay in World of Tanks is actually really exciting to play. If you like playing tanks in Battlefield 5 or any other Call of Duty game or any game that allows you to drive a tank, you can do that all the time in World of Tanks. What's not to like about that? So in my opinion, one of the most exciting parts about this is that first time World of Tank players get a T127 tank, 500 gold, and 7 days of premium access using code TANKTASTIC. That is a great way to get started in this awesome game, get a quick bonus, and go out there and enjoy a really new, fast-paced type of game that allows you to control a tank. Yeah, have we said tank enough in this ad spot? But yeah, guys, if you do want to sign up, link in the description down below. And thanks again to World of Tanks for sponsoring today's video. Hopefully we see you out there. So we hope you find people enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. There's going to be people comment in the chat and be like, what do you need people? People? Who?